A week ago, Hugo Schweizer, a man of whom I have a history with, penned a work claiming that the Colorado shooting and several other mass murders in the past were the result of white male privilege. This opinion by him I see as being completely wrong and denies an analysis of the objective situation. There are causal factors that went into this incident, as well as others that are not taken into account by Schweizer. However, before I get into why his theory is wrong, I do want to start by clarifying that I'm not making the case that white male privilege doesn't exist. It very well does. I'm not saying that at all. His contention is that white male privilege is the source of most of the mass murder shootings caused by white middle class males. He does acknowledge that there are exceptions to this and that not all mass shootings are carried out by white males. Perhaps the greatest asset that unearned privilege conveys is the sense that public spaces belong to you. White men from upper middle class backgrounds expect to be both welcomed and heard wherever they go. When that sense of entitlement gets frustrated, as it can for a host of complex psychological reasons, it is those who it's those same hyper privileged men who are the most likely to react with violent rage filled indignation. For white male murderers from nice families, the fact that they choose public places like schools, university campuses, or movie theaters as their targets suggests that they saw these places as legitimately theirs. Essentially, his argument is that white middle class men have a sense of entitlement that they have a perceived right to be automatically accepted and taken seriously as though their opinions were always informed and legitimate. If this sense of entitlement is rejected, the anger and frustration of rejection manifest themselves in a violent act. On the surface, this would appear very plausible. However, I feel if this were so, then those of even greater hyper-privilege, as Schweizer puts it, were rejected in such a sphere, their retaliation to perceived injustice would be much more violent on a larger scale. We would see the Koch brothers or the Rockefellers opening fire on Congress or walking into an Occupy movement and begin acts of retaliatory violence. This is obviously not the case. However, one could argue that the actions of people like this and their class driving the society towards war, Iraq, Iran, Syria, for example, could be a manifestation of it. I disagree with such a sentiment because of the magnitude and the motivating factors behind it. There is a monumental difference between organizing a multi-billion dollar media campaign to convince the public to go to war, buying out politicians and working out contracts for defense dollars, and simply walking into a public space and begin risking your own life in a battle. These actions are driven primarily by a profit motive, not by a perceived slight to their privilege. This, I believe, shows that the mass murder shootings were not based on a sense of privilege. They could have been a triggering factor for the violence that took place, but not the source of it. The white mass murders she refers to as examples are Charles Whitman and Eric Harris and Dylan Klebold. Charles Whitman consulted a therapist about issues he was having with his mental health. One wonders how bad it was if a man in, the in 1966 was willing to admit there was a mental health problem. It was likely more severe than we think it was given how mental illness was perceived at the time. Most likely this, the mental problem he was suffering from was post-traumatic stress disorder given that he was a Marine. His choice of the public place where he committed the killings, the University of Texas at Austin, were probably symptomatic of his own failed attempt at academia, which is why he was called back to active service in 1963. Uh, not to mention his abusive father, which also caused him to leave home at a young age. Now, Eric Harris and Dylan Klebold, better known as the Columbine Killers, the Trenchcoat Mafia, were also mentioned specifically by Schweizer as white, almost because they were very young men, who committed their crimes because of rejection of their white privilege. In truth, both young men had tremendous mental illness and extreme antisocial behavior that was clearly evident in the videotapes that they made and from investigations that were made after their deaths. They reacted to the physically and emotionally brutal treatment they received, not some challenge to their white privilege. Now, given all of this, later on in his post, he seems to make a complete 180 and completely changes what he previously said. The fact that these white male mass murderers felt so confident choosing public spaces to commit their crimes reflects a powerful truth about the culture in which they were raised. Put simply, they did what they did because of an individual sickness 
but they did it where they did it, in part because of white privilege. His previous contention was that they did the shooting because of white male privilege. Now it's the place they chose to do it is the result of it. It seems he's changed the cause of their actions part way through. Now perhaps I'm not reading it right, but he does claim the shootings come from white privilege, and then now claims it's only attributed to the location selected and no longer the crime. Even then, their selection of the locations doesn't correspond with any kind of white privilege. Both instances took place where the shooters had suffered failure or abuse. Charles Whitman had academic failure in his past. The only time it seems he suffered failure. His military and Eagle Scout records show him to be a success. Eric Harris and Dylan Klebold attacked their school because that's where they suffered at the hands of their peers. They targeted students and faculty for wrongdoings and perceived wrongdoings that had been committed against them. Schweizer's conclusion on why these white male privileged shooters chose a particular location to attack is simply wrong and does not correspond to the objective facts. Both the Columbine killers and Charles Whitman carried out their killings because of the mental illness they suffered and was triggered by the trauma or incident they experienced. There are people who have the same mental illness who never kill anyone, and there are people who suffer the same triggering events and don't kill anyone. The white male privilege is not an explanation as to why these individuals carried, their, carried out their acts the way they did, or even why they did. In addition to this, there are other factors that also led to this shooting and the possibilities of it happening as well. For example, gun ownership is higher among white males than any other demographic in the United States, mainly in rural areas, but overall in the country, the people with the highest rates of gun ownership are white males. As well as to be expected, they are also more, they are also more common among conservatives. I'm not saying that the Colorado shooter was conservative or that uh, the Columbine killers were conservative or that Whitman was conservative, although it was very likely given the factors in the military. I don't think anyone has identified the Colorado shooter's political beliefs yet. So th this would naturally be less likely from a liberal because they have a lower rate of gun ownership. Accessibility to mental health services is also a tremendous factor in these shootings. Even the middle class have a difficult time in accessing any kind of mental health service. Insurance companies find it completely worthless, and in the capitalist economy it's extremely expensive, as opposed to social societies which make it more publicly available. Social attitudes towards mental health contribute to it as well. The stigma against those who seek it is still pretty bad. I cannot even imagine how bad it was for Charles Whitman back in 1966. In attempting to explain the shootings and their causes, Hugo Schweizer has hyper-focused on his area of expertise, gender studies. This has led to a narrowing of understanding and focus that has disregarded other factors that went into the event and what and the venue for which it was chosen, most notably the history of mental illness among the shooters. On the other hand, I've taken into account several factors, gender, class status, political ideology, mental health, accessibility of guns, etc. Schweizer has oversimplified a situation that needs a much more in-depth explanation.